Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in. Back around to another edition of Astros Recap. David Artis here, once again, here to break things down for you in the world of Astros baseball. Good week, of course, full seven game week. They go five and two. Usually you'd take that, right? So, can't be too upset with them going five and two, playing obviously Texas for four and Arizona for three. You should at least take five of seven. Um, obviously, three of four in Texas and then two of three against Arizona. Yeah, I don't feel very good about the Arizona series. I don't care what happened today. It looked like they were going to lose today. In fact, it looked like they were going to lose on Friday as well. So really, I mean, they're a few innings away from actually being swept by a team who now has 100 losses in the Diamondbacks. Uh, it's just what the Astros have been. It's what they've done all year. They don't play. They play down to the competition. I mean... Their record against teams under 500 or very subpar teams is not very good at all. I mean, they they just they play good or you know good enough against you know the good teams, but just not good enough against like they don't take care of business. They don't take out the trash, so to speak. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of things. Uh, luckily, I mean, you think about it, the Astros will be in the playoffs. They'll win their division. So. You, if you play good against the good team, that's who you'll be playing in the playoffs. So I guess it votes well in that aspect. But Astros only have 13 games left this year. Uh, they sit at 87 and 61 or 80. Hold on. 80. 88 and 61. Let me look at this. All right, now this is gonna bother me. 88 and 61 what I said, right? Yeah, 88 and 61. By the way, uh, it is 11.53 p.m., so I'm probably taking you to the midnight hour here. I know it's late. Um, I know I work tomorrow morning early back at the ballpark, so I'll get about five and a half hours, maybe a little less of sleep, but uh, we'll make it work. I'll take a nice long nap tomorrow. At least that's the plan. But yeah, so, I mean, I can't be too upset. I always hate going into any series. Well, especially, if, you know, excluding two-game series. Is, <laughs> that's a word. Um, I hate going into any series really um, expecting a sweep. I mean, the one time I've done that prior to this Arizona series was against Baltimore at home after we had swept them, you know, at their place. Uh, and we got swept, so... I just don't like doing it, but obviously I think anything short of a, a three-game sweep against Arizona was going to be a disappointment. So you win the series, but it's a disappointment. And like I said, I mean, it took them extra innings on Friday, and they were gifted the win on a walk-off hit by pitch. Sunday today, I mean, they were down six. What was it, six to or six to four in like the eighth inning? And yeah, you had the big two-run shot by Jose Siri. Actually, his third home run of the, um, the week, basically. He had two in his first ever start for the Astros. He had two home runs, had like four RBIs, four hits. Um, but had a big two-run home run. And then Chaz McCormick, who uh, I'm not a huge fan of. I just don't think he's good enough. He strikes out way too much. Um, hit the go-ahead home run, and we were able to shut the door. Uh, think about you 13 games left so I mean the Astros you want to play for the best record in the American League because I think that's still on the table it's still there for the taking obviously three and a half back of Tampa Bay you do have a three game set with Tampa Bay at home coming up uh, is it this weekend this next weekend let's see here no it's not it's a uh, Tuesday Wednesday Thursday of next week so the Astros will have an opportunity. Like they, they're gonna have to sweep that series, which is hard to ask playing Tampa Bay. But that, that's the only scenario I see them uh, end actually pull off. You know, the best record in the American League. Uh, Tampa slipped lately. I mean, they're they've like four and six in their last ten, something like that. I think I read that earlier today. So Tampa hasn't been, you know, yeah. Hasn't been, you know, killing it like they had. I mean, playing Toronto, who's the hottest team in baseball right now. So, um, let's see, what's Toronto? 
by other not maybe not the hottest, but they're still playing good baseball. I mean, they're 84 and 65. Uh, they've but you, New York, the Yankees have fallen. Boston's still right there. Boston had a, they slipped for a while, but then they got themselves together. They've won five in a row. So uh, there's that. Our division, a six game lead over Oakland. Oakland has won five in a row, so they've sort of gotten things together, put themselves in a decent shot. Seattle has uh, fallen a little bit, but you know. Seattle, I think, I mean, them falling, them, you know, they've already overachieved. I don't, if they were to lose the rest of the games this year, which won't happen, but if that was the case, it'd still be a successful season for them because, I mean, I, I don't, nobody, I, they're a surprise team this year, I, I think it's fair to say. But for the Ashes, I mean, yeah, I look at it this week. So obviously four with Los Angeles. So you know, there I think that you know, you, like if the Astros just win their series, they'll actually get to 97 wins, which has sort of been the goal, as we've sort of felt our way through the year. You know, I go into the year thinking 88 to 92 wins, um, but I mean, 88 and. 61, obviously, that sort of has gone out the window, I feel like, um, but, yeah, 97 wins, they go 97 and 65, I don't care if that gets us uh, the the best, re- I, I don't think it would, <laughs> I think it'll take more like 100 wins, and for the Astros to do that, they can only lose one more game in the remaining 13, I don't think they can do that, necessarily, um, but yeah, 97 is the goal. And um, the reason I say that, I haven't really talked about this, but if you remember last year, they went 29 and 31, and there were 60 games. So they go 32 games over 500. That would, 32 games over with 97 wins, that would give them the two to actually get back to a 500 record last year, plus the 30 games over this year. Kind of a weird thing. You can call me, you know, weird if you want, but that's kind of the way I sort of look at things. So, um, yeah. Obviously, last year was a bad year. The Astros then got got their got their things together come playoff time. I think the roster, you know, pretty pretty good. Um, yeah, outfielder sort of a revolving door. Uh, you know, Brantley's hurt again. He's on the IL, so he we expect him to be healthy come playoff time. But after you trade a Miles Straw, you know, center field and just the outfielders in general. The revolving door of Chaz McCormick, you know, Jake Myers, and now Jose Siri. So, um, I mean, Siri's showing that he probably deserves to, you know, maybe make this team. Uh, I think Chaz McCormick has sort of been the the, the odd guy out. I, I think uh, Jake Myers has proven that, you know, he's he's worth uh, uh, definitely a playoff roster spot. And Siri, Siri also, I mean, something to think about. He, he's fast. He can steal bases. He's, you know. Uh, that's valuable in the playoffs, so it'd be a tough decision. Um, but you know, if you're asking me, obviously I'm not the biggest Chas McCormick fan, but I think he's the odd guy out. So um, it's the way I look at things. Brantley Alvarez has been getting, getting a lot of starts in the left field. Obviously Kyle Tucker's held down his spot in right field. He's I've been hitting the ball very well, so. Uh, outfielders, you definitely got some options there. You know, right after they traded Miles Straw, wasn't too happy about that. Didn't think they got a whole lot. Phil Maton has not been uh, very good out of the bullpen for the most part. He's had been okay sometimes. Like I prefer him over some other guys, obviously, but he just hasn't. He hasn't been shut down by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and then I guess you're banking on the minor league catcher they got in that deal so but um yeah I mean obviously you know Yuli just going position by position Yuli at first uh he's been pretty steady I mean he's cooled off he had an amazing start to the year he cooled off since I, he's still hitting right around 300 I believe so you know Yuli, Yuli he's also pretty good you know in, in big situations I feel like you know when he comes when he comes up with runners in scoring position he's usually uh, good uh, clutch in those situations. I'd say to get those runners home. Correa's looked a little bit better. You know, Tuve 
is, you know, he's hit some home runs now. Um, hadn't done much the last few games, if I remember correctly, but Altuve is Altuve, and you know, Brightman's been good since coming off the IL. And then, of course, you know, behind the plate, whether it's Martin Maldonado, who, a guy I've, you know, I've, I, you know Maldonado been here since 18. Obviously, we lost him, was it 19 or 20, whatever it was. They got him back. I think it was 19. They resigned, well, they got him at the deadline. And then they had him for 20. And obviously, they had him this year. And they signed him for next year. So, Maldi, a guy they like. But, you know, a guy I used to like, but now I just feel like, dude, just hit me. He gets up to the batter's box, and it's like just like most of the time he just doesn't care. I don't like to see that. And people, you know, marvel at his defense. But I can't sit here and act like the defense outweighs. Like, the way I can word this perfectly, like, I can't sit here and be like, well, look, I mean, if you bring in Jason Castro or, you know, Garrett Stubbs, you can't tell me that the the, the defense gets markedly worse the, as them as catchers. It's not like Maldi can throw out every runner and, like, I mean, I mean it, it, it. But neither of them can hit. Like, I, you, Castro's had big hits, I believe, late in games, big situations. Garrett Stubbs haven't seen enough to, to, to get a good gauge there. Uh, and I'm not asking for a lot. I'm asking for a 200 average. But Maldi's just been atrocious. Um, like, uh, let me give you his... Uh, <laughs> he's hitting 172. Hasn't hit 200 the entire year. He's hitting 172. 10 home runs, 32 RBIs. Uh, yeah. Career batting average 212. If he could hit that, I'd take it. All I'm asking is to get me to 200, but he just gets in the batter's box and just doesn't doesn't care. It's like he goes up there expecting to strike out, and he walks back to the dugout. And I mean, it just yeah, I I yeah, I just I man, I can't do it. But I mean, they really have no alternative. I mean, he, I I do like him as a catcher. He's not like the, I mean, he's. He's a smart catcher, okay? But, like I said, don't tell me that, like, Jason Castro and Garrett Stubbs are markedly worse behind the plate as a catcher. I'm not, I'm not going to buy into that. I'm not going to do it. Um, there's that. Uh, obviously, starting pitching, it's, it's just never consistent. Never. I mean, Lance McCullers isn't consistent. Zach Greinke has been terrible his last three, four starts. Obviously, had the COVID uh, thing mixed in there. But his ERA's now jumped over four. I mean, when you give up six runs to the Diamondbacks, uh, you have big problems. And, yeah, Granke, yeah, 500. He was not good. He was not. Uh, Peter Solomon, didn't even realize this, but four innings today actually picked up the win, saved our bullpen because our bullpen has been taxed. Presley struck out the side in a 1-2-3 ninth. To get his 25th save, his ERA's jumped over his 2.23. Solomon a 1.29, obviously small sample size, but yeah, Granky at 4.11 now. So uh, McCullers on Saturday was not good uh, either. I mean, six innings, seven hits, three runs, two earned, two walks, eight strike. I mean, he wasn't terrible, but again, you're playing the Diamondbacks. Phil Maton came in, had a scoreless inning, but walked a guy. Scoreless two thirds of an inning, walked a guy. Brooks Raley got an out. Uh, Stanick, solid one, two, three. Presley gave up a hit, yeah, but he was good. It was Jimmy Garcia who really struggled, you know. So you know when the Astros did their uh, thing at the deadline and you know picked up Grave, uh, Graveman, Jimmy Garcia, Phil Maton. Um, obviously, Rafael Montero, who I think believes out for the year, it's like on the 60-day IL or 30-day, he's, he's died. We probably won't see him uh, pitch again for the Astros, I guess. Um, but you know, the uh, bullpen hasn't been dynamite. I mean, Graveman, you know, Presley, they they have not been 
they've had vulnerable moments. You know, it hasn't been all the great. So, you know, the bullpen, which we thought might end up being a strength or at least not a total weakness, which it was early in the year, is just sort of, eh, I'm not sure. I mean, bullpen's important considering the rotation. And, I mean, you pick guys out of a hat there and you just hope for the best and you hope that they have their A or B game, I guess. But, you know, McKellar's is going to be most likely your first starter in game one of the playoffs. But after that, I mean, Luis Garcia, probably. Uh, great. The only thing that, that, that works for Granky at this point is the fact that he's experienced. But other than that, I mean, he's stunk. Granky's been terrible his last five starts or whatever it's been. He's just not good. He, he hasn't been good. Um, yeah, it's not been a good year for, for Zach Granky. Uh, but even from Valdez, since they uh, cracked down on the, you know, the foreign substance use, he, you know, used to apparently use sunscreen um, to help him with, you know, better grip. And obviously he can't do that anymore. Uh, but he, Valdez was a huge part of the rotation last year. Obviously Javier... Huge, but Javier hasn't been good uh, for the last few months now at the bullpen. So it's one of those things where you know, we'll see. But, um, you know, you, you can't go into the playoffs with a high-powered offense and expect to win games scoring seven, eight, nine runs. It doesn't work that way. You have to be able to win you know, two to one, three to two low-scoring games. Can the Astros do that, I think, is the big question. Now, I think they could. But you're going to have to get good starts and, you know, solid relief um, come that time. So, obviously, you want to avoid the White Sox at all costs. They, have a do, they do have a three-game lead there, so that's nice. But um, you try to avoid them in the first round if you can. I mean, teams they play in the playoffs, if they ward up, actually get the best record would probably you're looking at maybe Boston New York Toronto would probably be your matchup and I'd probably yeah, I'd rather face them than the White Sox just because you know I mean the White Sox rotation I mean with Lance Lynn Lucas Giolito Carlos Rodon that's a scary one two three punch right there uh, not to say the Astros can't hit or you know find a way to win those games but I'd rather not face that if we don't have to. So um, that's the way I sort of look at things. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think Oda Rizzi, you know, he's, I, I guess he went on the IL, but he'll be okay. Brantley res just resumed baseball act activities, so he should be back in the lineup probably uh, no later than Friday, would be my guess there. Um, yeah, so just getting healthy, you know, for the uh, playoffs. You know, winning three or four, I mean, I also hate when the offense scores like you know, 12, 13 runs and then comes back the next day and scores like one. Like they did that in Texas, saying 15 to one on Monday, they lose eight to one on Tuesday. Then they win seven, two, 12, one, but I, I just... Nothing bothers me more than a feast or famine offense. It, 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 that really irks me. Um, just like, just be consistent. I mean, you score four, you beat the team by 14 runs one day and you lose by seven the next. I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that that's the type of stuff that bothers me. Um, but yeah, I played well. I mean, five and two this week. I mean, you look at last week, what they do, they went to four and two. And the week before that, it's two and four. I mean, yeah, you know, it's just you. Your tail's on. Your your tail's on. Thirteen more games, so <clears throat> you know we'll have another week tomorrow, obviously, to talk. Um. Yeah. Well, I guess two two more full weeks is what it looks like. Yeah. So. But yeah, I mean, it, overall, you got to be happy with where we're at. Um, you know, I can't, I can't really complain too much. So, uh, quick standings update. Like I talked about the Astros six-game lead, but 
Uh, just some other teams to keep an eye out on. Obviously, you know, the division winners or division leaders, Tampa Bay, Chicago, and Houston. you got Boston's got a one-game lead, number one wildcard spot, Toronto. Uh, is the second spot there, and then New York's a game and a half back, and then Oakland's two games back. I think Seattle at four it might be too much to overcome, but that doesn't really surprise at least everybody outside of Seattle. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see the wild card race there. I think uh, uh, it would be well. It's uh, we'll see here. We'll see. Yeah. You know, Tampa Bay's falling a little bit, so. Uh, as you look at the NL, obviously, it looks like the Braves will win their division, even though it's a, it's a, it's a terrible, it's 77-70, and, and they'll win their division. I, I mean, it's it's the worst division of baseball. Philly uh, is out two games, so I guess they have a fighting chance, but the Mets at five and a half back, they're not overcoming that. The Mets will not make the playoffs. Uh, that was a playoff team I had going into the year, but, yeah, they, they've, yeah. Uh, Sign Lindor to a huge. Getting some texts here, <laughs> but um, sign Lindor to a big deal. You get Baez at the deadline, and yeah, it didn't, did, did, had, hadn't worked out. Milwaukee's a good team. Uh, they've clinched the playoff spot. Obviously, the Giants and the Dodgers. Dodgers or Giants holding on to a one-game lead in their, that division. That's going to come down to the wire. Uh, interesting part, uh, St. Louis is now into the second wild card. They've won eight in a row. So St. Louis kind of like a, uh, Toronto and getting hot at the right time, you know. So obviously the Dodgers with a 16-game lead. <laughs> that wild card game is going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, St. Louis, and they hold a three-game lead. So San Diego's faded so far back. Looks like team you thought would be very good this year is not I mean they went out and got everybody and just expanded the payroll and just it's not it hasn't I mean, they had help they held that second wild card for the longest time but now it's yeah I don't I don't, I don't see them making it but hypothetically I mean Cincinnati three games out Philly three and a half and San Diego also at three and a half. Now we'll see. It'll be interesting there. Obviously, Milwaukee, and then we'll we'll see with San Francisco and L.A. So, make sure standings up. I'm gonna cut things early tonight. Actually, not as tired as I've been the last few Sundays with work. Uh, it was exhausting, but you know, got through it. Um, but 23 minutes. Um. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I, the last few weeks I haven't recapped every game like I will do, like well I have done, but I just sort of give you my general overview of the week. So, um, but love to hear your thoughts. Comment section below. Uh, what's your thoughts on you know playoffs? Going for the best overall record? Our rotation of playoffs. Also, we'll get close to trying to finalize. Well my opinion of a 25-man roster for the playoffs. That'll probably be in two weeks when the season actually ends to come up with 25 guys um, that you would you'd have on your playoff roster. Things get a little tricky when you think about your bench players and your bullpen, but um, that would be something something to think about for a little bit. But Astros keep winning. Again, you win, you win your three remaining series and you, you get to 97 wins. It's that simple. So... Any combination there. I mean, they have to go nine and four. I believe that's the nine and four. Yeah, sounds right. Uh, but yeah, I'll wrap things up there. Coming up here, and we'll um, we'll talk to you next week. See you then.